Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, we're building these. Of course it rains right after I install an irrigation device. Those are moisture sensing irrigation modular reservoirs. Yes, I just came back in from yelling these. Um, for this episode, you're probably going to want to have watched this episode. Uh, that episode pretty much explains uh, all of the intricacies of this system in more detail. But now you get to see the results of that system. So here we go. And this is the system in action. Uh, I haven't touched these plants other than uh, to stake them up. And the only hiccup I've had is that one of the black pipes uh, popped off and drained the small reservoir that I had on it at the time. This system has just kept the nutrient solution to the plants pretty much perfectly. Um, as it gets hotter, uh, the plants transpire more. It works harder to feed them. And when they don't need it on rainy days, it doesn't feed them at all. So these plants have just gone from strength to strength and I'm feeding them full strength nutrient solution. There's no burning. Um, it's a, they're really healthy leaves except for some insect damage on them. And this isn't a hobby. This is just taking care of itself. So I'll show you here some of the fruits that we've got on the system. Uh, I'll just pick a couple of eggplant. <laughs> I think I've left a couple of these eggplant a little too long. <laughs> they work. That's great. But there's one major drawback. They aren't able to be put anywhere in your garden. Uh, unless you run irrigation hosing to that section of your garden, uh, you can't put these devices in. I want to put these devices on the plants that I can't get to water regularly. Trees, plants in my soil garden, uh, and I want to not only water them with water, but water them with hydroponic nutrient, which is actually called fertigation, when you're putting mineral salts to feed plants into a soil environment. To achieve this, I need to connect this irrigation device to a water supply which is its own reservoir now what we'll need today is you'll need your irrigation devices and you'll need a drill bit that matches the diameter of the brown tubing which comes off the moisture sensing irrigation devices so to start with just set up your irrigation devices as it tells you in the instructions now, I'm not exactly sure of the size drill bit that I needed uh, to drill a hole and seal the hole with this um, end bit, uh, but I've got a four and a 3.5 millimeter here, and I'll let you know. Now, we're just gonna drill a hole close enough to the bottom. Uh, you don't wanna be right on the bottom, but uh, the closer to the bottom you are, the lower the container will drain. So, um, we'll just put a hole in the container and you want to make that hole as neat as possible because, um, you don't want the edges to be sharp, uh, because this rubber is actually, um, very thin and, um, and a little bit brittle. So just clean that end up. So you want to take the barbed piece off um the rubber tubing and we're just gonna thread the rubber tubing through the hole that we've made and in one of the hardest shots i'll ever have to do for this channel i'm just going to put this and thread it and as you can see i've got the barb on the end and now i'm just going to pull through the barbed end and it should push into the hole, creating a seal. Oh, it worked. There it is. And that, that is a tight seal on that hole. 
Now that's the 3.5 millimeter drill bit I use there. Beautiful. Now you can do this with any style of container. Uh, just be mindful. If it doesn't have a lid, it may collect mosquitoes. And if it's see-through, you're probably gonna get algae if you don't block the light entering if you're using hydroponic fertilizers. So, if you're just watering, clear container is probably going to be fine. I'm going to have to cut a hole in the top of this because I can't get my hand into the container so that I can push the uh, barb into the pipe. Um, so I'm just cutting a flap, which I'll flap up and flap back down and tape down. Uh, or maybe not tape down, depending on how big the uh, gaps are uh, and where the mosquitoes can get in. Um, because it's not the easiest thing in the world, I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. Um, I'm just using the edge of the container to wiggle that barb on. Then you just use your fingernails to bring it all the way to the base. And then we can pull it through pretty much because um, it's, it's attached over the barb. So I'll pull and push at the same time. There, we've got a seal. So these two trees are prime candidates for this reservoir irrigation device setup. Now you can see my hose all the way over there behind my garden beds. And I can make a reach over to here, uh, but I don't want irrigation piping coming all the way across my lawn. And at this point, I'm not willing to dig up my lawn and install irrigation piping. So as a temporary solution for renters, or even as a semi-permanent solution, uh, just to get your trees through the dry months of the year, uh, I'm gonna use it on this tree. And I'm also gonna introduce uh, some of those fertigation, hydroponic fertilizers into the mix and give it a bit of oomph, because as you can see here, um, it's coming into fruit right now. And I wanna really get that water and the nutrition to the roots of the plant. Now, as you can see here, this is definitely not the ideal watering situation. Uh, my hose is a bit short, and while I could get a different hose, um... <laughs> I didn't turn it on. Let's try that again. Um, there we go. Now, I'm watering this tree now because uh, the instructions say that uh, the area that you're putting in the moisture sensing device needs to be well and truly soaked um, for the device to you know not be completely on uh, the moment that you adjust the, the uh, turning thing on top so I'm soaking uh, the plant that I'm going to add the a reservoir and device into uh, and then we can get it set up so to set up the device and I've just disturbed some ants, so I'm gonna do this very fast. Uh, I'm gonna pull back the mulch layer that I've created on top, because uh, that is to protect from evaporation. And then we're gonna find where um, the root and dirt and uh, humus layer is. And then I'm going to stick this sensor directly into that, like that. And now that that sensor's in, I can fill up a reservoir. Uh. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but this is how it's happening. Oh. See the, the pump, I'm, I'm on a house pump, so the pressure's varying as it kicks on and kicks off. And I've got a pressure bladder so that the pump doesn't run continuously. So as the pressure bladder turns down, and the pump kicks in, it's slightly more powerful. Makes showering really interesting. <laughs> All right, so now that there's water in the res, I'm going to open this up and then I wanna close it until it has a single droplet on the end. And then I'm gonna close it two arrows. So one, two. And when that dries, when that dries out, uh, the pressure 
created from uh, the water being drawn out into the less moist environment uh, will then cause it to open and uh, feed the tree. So I've got a different hose coming from a different angle. <laughs> you can see why I hate watering this tree. So this is a 60 litre barrel, which I think is about the right size for me not having to change it every second day. Um, and into this barrel, I'm introducing uh, half the amount of hydroponic nutrient that I would usually use for full strength. Half strength hydroponic nutrient, essentially. Um, as a fertigation nutrient. So this is uh, actually high potassium. Uh, because it's in flower at the moment, this is the diamond tea. And I'm just going to add that in and mix it up. And there we go. Won't have to touch it again. <laughs> and we can use this technique in places in our garden that are also far away from a tap. Even though these aren't necessarily far away from a tap, <laughs> I don't water my garden much. Um, my hydroponics water themselves. So let's wet these guys down and we'll give them some long-term attention. The attention that they deserve. And we're just gonna do the same again. Whoops, so now we're just going to open the valve till we've got the water coming out then we'll pull that water back to just a drip and then we can close it one two now i'm not going to add any hydroponic nutrients to that one because there's no protection from the light and it will just turn into an algal bloom all right these guys are thirsty i'm thirsty it's beer o'clock Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Never water again on Hoochos. And you even get some sneak peek Hoochos exclusives. Such a good guy. Just, you know, providing for all those plants, letting them drink first. Oh. God, that's good. Oh. Don't think I'm finished yet like a lot of these to make. <laughs>